Welcome to Technical Coaching with Ralph. I am Ralph. In this video, we're going to talk about the M3U8 parser, a Python package that I recently came across, and how we can use it. Um, so let's go ahead and share the screen and we can talk through this presentation. So this QA project that we're going to do is about the M3U8 parser, as I mentioned earlier. So I was going to make this whole thing a pre-recorded video, but I decided to split it up. We're going to talk about what it is in a pre-recorded video, and then we'll have a live stream where we can actually go through and implement it. Um, and so we can have, uh, see how it looks. And if there's any questions, we can figure that out at that time. So let's go. So an overview on the M3U8 parser. It's a parser for M3U files. It parses the contents of M3U file to a list of streams information, which can be saved as a JSON or a CSV file. All right. Uh, if you're not familiar with M3U8 files, this probably means nothing to you, but um, keep following along and you'll get some more understanding. Before I go on, I just wanted to mention, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Also, feel free to leave me a comment. I'll make sure to listen to, to respond to all comments. Okay, so let's go. Why M3U8? So there, here are some questions we're going to answer. How does HLS streaming work? What is a manifest file? Who uses this? Why not use Selenium Wire? How to find an M3U8 file? So some of this we're going to cover in this video, some of this we'll cover in the live stream. But to get started, um, how does HLS streaming work? So let's find out. Let me take down the share for a second. So the best way to find out anything that we're not sure of, we Google it. So let's look at this Google search. So let me make the screen a little bigger. What is the meaning of HLS? HLS stands for HTTP live streaming. In short, HLS is a streaming protocol for delivering visual and audio media to viewers over the internet. So believe it or not, we use HLS all the time, whether it's from YouTube videos, Netflix videos, um, pretty much any video nowadays on the internet, internet is going to be using um, HLS. HTTP live streaming. All right, so let's go back to the presentation. And what is a manifest file? So the manifest file is the file that contains all the data about the video that's going to be played back. So there can be a, what they call a variant manifest that loads the different qualities of video that you have. And then in those quality manifests, there will be, there will be the actual um, video files that need to be played. Who uses this? As I alluded to a little earlier, um, pretty much any video company nowadays is using um is using um, m3u8 files using hls streaming because it allows the video to play back faster you don't have to wait for a, for an entire video file such as an mp4 file or a, a mov file to load before it can actually start playing so why not use selenium wire selenium wire we went over a, a couple of days ago why not use selenium wire because with Selenium Wire, it still requires you to 
open up a browser to um, navigate and then you need to um, parse out the request and the responses. And that can be problematic when um, for something that we can test very simply. And then the last question is how to find an M3U8 file. So we'll go through this part um, on the live stream, but in the basic sense, you could use a, for instance, the Chrome developer tools. In the network tab, you can um, filter out the M3U8 file, and then that you can you could use. But we'll go more in depth in that on the live stream. So to get ready for the live stream, the tools that we're going to need, which we should have already based on when we're working on Selenium Wire, we're going to need Python installed. We're going to need a Python editor. I use PyCharm. We're going to need the request package from Python. And we're going to need the M3U8 parser package from Python. These two will we'll install and configure together during the live stream. The steps that we're going to follow during the live stream is we're going to install the packages, the two packages we mentioned, request and M3U8. We're going to find M3U8 playlist. And we're going to take that playlist and we're going to run it through the parser and then we're going to validate the responses that we get after running the playlist through the parser. So four main steps, but there's going to be a lot of details in between. So that will be tons of fun. So what are our desired outcomes for this project? So the goal of this project is, is to successfully parse an M3U8 playlist using the M3U8 parser and to validate the responses that we get. So what are the benefits of using the M3U8 parser? So it's a nifty way to validate manifest functionality. It prevents having us to go through the browser navigation to do all of that validation. And that introduces, or actually it reduces the amount of test flakiness that we would have. So it allows our tests to be more accurate and give us less false positives or false falses. Hmm, how does that go? Anyhow, we're gonna figure all of that out on the live stream where we go through the M3U8 parser. I really hope to see everyone there.